Uh, so last, uh, Amit Sharma from SoftBank, please. Hello, everybody. Good morning to you all. First of all, my thanks uh, to the organizer, Anand, for inviting me here to speak. And I thank with the great respect to, to all the people here for coming and join this session. It's a great honor for me to be here with some of the most important people in this business. And I look forward to learn some good ideas from them today evening. I'm sure we all are going to enjoy this session and we'll share our thoughts with each other. A few minutes ago in the lobby and I was discussing with one of the panelists and I thought the solar has made a remarkable journey in last six, seven years. I've been to, into this industry from last seven years. And I, I can see like the tariff from 24 rupees to 2.44. So according to a recent study, I'll see there will be more change, more competition and more opportunity in this industry over the next few years than ever before. My take is like we all talk about price, technology, financing. Yes, of course, that's why we are, we are here. I still remember those days, 2011 and 12, when we were at rupee 11 or 12. From 24, it dropped to 20, you know, 11 and 12 rupees and within next one year, it dropped to six rupee. We all were worried and I share my personal experience that when I was in, in my previous experience and it is, <coughs> it is about 2011 and 12, I, was, I thought whether I should remain into this industry or not, or should I switch over to thermal or to other sector? You know, I was very, very much worried at that time. Because at six rupee, when we thought we were not prepared that whether we are challenging coal, whether we are challenging thermal or hydro, yes, of course, that's what we are here right now. 2.44 or 3.79 cents. Last couple of years, I did a project and, I, I, and I'm blessed that I got an opportunity to work one of the best project and biggest project in India so far. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see some of my old friends here whom, you know, I didn't get a chance to meet. And it's a great opportunity for me to meet them again. So when I was talking like, 2.44 or 3.79 cents. This is really affordable and this is a good sign for the masses of the country. Believe me, when we were at six, we were not prepared whether we can beat the coal prices or not. Today we are. Coal sitting at, is still sitting at 7.8 cents. That's, that's why we are here. We all are very, very Positive. I think we should be very, very positive for the solar business in India. So my take is like, you know, I was uh, debating with the, uh, one of my, you know, very good friend and I was discussing, I know, you know, many of us will know that for the first time in the industrial revolution of 18,000, 18th century, Britain was powered for one day without coal, 100% renewable, 100% solar. And Germany too was at the 85% for a day. So we are heading towards the renewable, although you know it's a very small percentage when it comes to a thermal. Yes, it's only 8% of the capacity. But yes, in my opinion, solar is really, really 
going to be one of the prime source of energy moving forward. Uh, most of the panelists have already covered all the topics and I think I don't have much to say, but yes, I completely agree with Tanya. That we always talk about technology, we always talk about price, we always talk about financing, but what is the main thing, mainstream thing, why these prices are coming down? These are not coming down only from the module sides. And we need to understand that module, when we say module, it is, it is a technology. We all know that we started from 200 megawatt watt peak of a panels. And right now we are anticipating that it would go up to 450 watt peak of a panel also with the improved efficiency and uh, other things. So prices are not coming down only due to the modules. There are some equipments and I agree with Gagan also when he said, our own car when he said that there are the other components also, like obviously we, the, there are the commodities like steel, metals, which are not specifically meant for the solar, it's in general. But yes, we are, when we look at the CAPEX and we look at the OPEX, we see different things when it comes to OPEX, you know, a couple of years back when rightly said one of my friend, like it was seven lakh rupee or five lakh rupee a megawatt. Now it is coming down. So what has changed? The technology has changed. We are talking about the robotic cleaning systems because obviously there would be challenges of water in next few years. We all know these solar sites are most of the sites are remote sites. So robotic cleaning systems or dry cleaning would be the best solution and that's why the people are taking the OPEX cost little bit lower than what we used to take it in past. At the same time, I, I would like to thank the government because government has to play a primary role in supporting this sector. And I would thank the government that they have come up with some development of a solar parks and accelerating the execution of a green corridor enhancing the financial health of DISCOM, which is a very, very important thing. DISCOM in our country is not in a good shape. We, I think we all know that there is a Uday kind of a thing that government has started and it has very well, you know, established in the government and now the DISCOMs can saved around 12,000 crores in FY17. And that's a significant step towards the revival of DISCOM. And that's the crux basically. It is very important that the government come up with the, some international PPAs, good PPAs, so that we can secure our business for the next 25 years. And it's, I don't know why we talk about 25 years can be more also, who stops you to at 25 years? I know I, I, you know, being in the procurement and sourcing department, I don't understand why it is only 25 years. Of course, when we talk that these equipments are meant for 25 years, we can meant it for 40 years also. So the business model, if we take it for 30 years or 35 years or 40 years can drastically change. We have seen like, you know, five years back, nobody was taking, I completely agree with Tanya when he, she said the AC-DC ratio. We were at 1.1, now people are thinking of 1.5. That makes a big difference. So, uh, friends, uh, I would like to say that I am very positive on the solar side, although, you know, Everybody knows that SoftBank or SB Energy won this Rajasthan project with why, you know, at 244, 245. But yes, of course, please wait for some time and we'll be able to deliver this project. I'm very positive and I also thank some of my 
very good partners here who supported us in execution of a, our AP First 350 project in Andhra Pradesh. And I thank them and thank to every single person who contributed in that project. 51 days ahead of that commissioning date. That's a remarkable thing, which I would say that in India, 51 days ahead of a you know, commissioning date, people are going towards in that direction. And that's the kind of a thing which we all should you know, think, basically. What, is, what does that impact? That gives a message to the government. You know, in, in our industry everywhere, when we see that there are lacunas, we always talk about the government department is having a lacuna in the system. So what the message we are trying to give? We are trying to give a message that let's be on time. Let's respect the time. Sorry, I'm, we are late by one hour for this session. <laughs> and I know all of you are waiting for the tea. I won't take much of your time, but yes, of course. We must congratulate the government that they are developing and they are trying to develop this thing. This is very good science for the solar industry because this is affordable to the masses. And second thing is like, when we talk about solar, we know that India is blessed with more than 300 sunny days in an year. And we have a wasteland I don't know how many of you know that how many wasteland we have. It's more than a 6.4 lakh square kilometer. And even if we use a fraction of that wasteland, we can build gigawatts of the solar projects. The world is not blessed with this kind of a land. We are blessed. We have all the seasons and hopefully the sunny seasons are more. So, that's not my statement that MNRE says that if we use that, uh, I'm not saying that MNRE says that if you use these fraction of a four, five, six percent of that land, you can build gigawatts of the projects here. And yes, of course, as a demand side, some of my panelists said that we have a, you know, good demands. Yes, of course, the transmissions or the substations are not in a good shape. The government need to think for that. One of the developers are facing challenges in Tamil Nadu on the higher PPAs. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying again and again that the, the PPAs is standard. It should improve. Everybody should be comfortable and secured enough with the PPAs. And I'm just closing my comments here. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. And uh, he's brought in some very positive viewpoints to um, project execution experiences, which are very encouraging. Uh, I, it creates, a, again, a sense of enthusiasm, of benchmarks, and uh, also the perspective on land. You know, on one hand, we heard Mr. Jain in the morning about how Rajasthan land prices keep on going up. On the other hand, we see this kind of a number being told. So I think there is a hope and a future in the planning somewhere, and we, need, we will be cautious of that. So from my perspective, thank you to all my colleagues here on the dais and over to Anand now. Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, indeed was a very enlightening uh, session and uh, top leaders of solar industry attended uh, on our invitation. So I would like to thank them. Just adding one thing from my side, like I have been interacting with so many regulators and developers and the government officials. See. Uh, we are ahead, moving on this target of 100 gigawatts of solar and 60 gigawatts of wind. When we hear this, on the other hand, what we are hearing is that there is excess power with some states. Having said that, still a lot of pop our population having, are having uh, no access to electricity at all. So 
definitely we have to work on the transmission and distribution side but i think just a food for thought for everyone in this industry let us not set a target of 100 gigawatts let us look at putting our entire country powered by renewable energy sources so then this kind of confusion or this kind of problem that we are seeing that on one hand we have de uh, the demand of power going down the plfs or thermal plants going down and the banks facing problems because of these thermal plants uh, plfs going down and we are talking of adding more and more solar to the grid so just uh, uh, this uh, thought that i would like to share uh, with the top influencers that we have uh, thank you very much i think uh, let's uh, make a huge huge round of applause for I now request uh, our session chair, Mr. Ravi Khanna ji, to present uh, gifts of appreciation and mementos to all our fellow uh, speakers, please.